And okay, a uh, few years ago, we started Atelier in inside KDE to fix a problem on 3D printing. Let's see if the slides pass out. When when you buy the common 3D printers on the market, you have probably you have this screen. Uh, they came mo most of them came come ah whatever with that screen and a button on the side that you go to the menus to manage the printer. That's awful to use. For example, I got to the printers that the emergency stop was three sub menus. So before the printer like start fire, plug on the, <laughs> on the, I can remove the energy instead of going to the menus. So, uh, since most of the technology is open source, let's get my script here because <laughs> um, most of the technology is open source uh, and the main co language that the printer interprets is open source, that is the decode file, that's this one. We can write a program to interpret those commands and send and push it to the serial command to the printer. So we, to solve, uh, <laughs> no problem. It's just I'm nervous. And so we start. Uh, we have it, we have this problem. Personally, I think that we have this technology that are open source. Start to be open source like in 2004 because of the patents where it start to expire for 3D printing, and we still use a technology for a LCD control that's very old. So we what we do? We are developers. We try. We start to build the uh, softwares for that. There are some uh, solutions on the market, but the main the main solution used is a closed source uh, that it and don't work properly on all platforms. So we were uh, we had a problem, so we start to build Atelier. Atelier is divided into two parts: is at the core that is Atelier core and Atelier that is the interface itself. I will go. I uh, will make a quick overall on the core. At core is a library. Okay, uh, it, it handles all the communication with the to the printer. It's written pure Qt. That was a decision that we made on, on the beginning of the development and uh, development because we wanted to build things fast. And most of the user are Windows, so we could build like cross platform more fast. If it, it, it was only cute without the KDE libraries, so uh, support most of the open source firmwares. We made that like plugins. Uh, we have, I think, that six or seven open source firmwares uh, available on our Happy Happy website, and they change, they handle that data a little bit different. So we made plugins for them to handle that tiny difference between them. And uh, is already so uh, at core is uh, is separated from interface, so you can plug anything on it, including KML, because we already support that. So uh, and at, uh, at core also has some widget libraries that we use on Atelier, because uh, to test at core to validate our work, we couldn't wait for. Uh, develop oh, the whole Atelier interface. So we made a release of Hatchcore January with a, a small test client and we use the same widgets on Atelier on with more con content. So also has this little widget library. And then we have Atelier that uses Qt and the KDE framework to have some uh, Part of the libraries that we are using. That I don't know. It's now is demo. Yeah, now is demo. Here is the face of Atelier when you open it. We are using KXML window. We are using KTEX editor here for the editor. If I get my mouse, yeah. I don't want to see nothing. Yeah. 
now you have a decode file here that you can edit and do and manage. And edit the file, save anything that you need. We are also using from KD. I don't remember the rest, sorry. <laughs> and, okay. So this is the face of Atelier. We have the welcome screen. Let go that. Where you have a quick connection guide. We get the news for website in get involved. We have the 3D view that needs work. That handles the code file. The, the editor and the camera. If I get in there, it will show my face. Yay. I'm here. Uh, I, I, I didn't test it, but since I'm using Qt uh, multimedia thing, I think, we can use uh, UDP connection to get a remote camera to use it. But I didn't test it. Let me stop this. Um, so, uh, as, as you can see, this side is the general uh, read get that you can use. We separated the works like two workspaces here. Here is the generic that is common features that is shared uh, with uh, the application. On this side, we have uh, at the core instance read get tabs. Uh, Atelier is the first printer host that allows you to control more than one to the printer at the time. So here I can open any windows and connect, if I have enough serial ports also, connect any amount of printers that I want to and control them in each one in one session. So this is the, f the first printer host that allows that because of this, the accomplation. Ah, yeah. <laughs> this separation from the <laughs> article of Atelier. It, it is also that we want to reach another device, like embedded one, so it was better for us to make this separation. And the first thing that you saw is this log entrance that when you open the sock, the port, maybe you have some trouble, so you see the log so you can send to us all the bugged information. I, I don't have a 2D printer here because Tomás wasn't able to get his 3D printer here today, but tomorrow we will have that. So I have my Arduino with a firmware on it. So I will connect and show you the other side. Uh, we have these, uh, we, did auto, uh, we have auto detect of the ports, of the plugins. When I connect the printer, I send a command, a decode command that returns me a huge string where I do a reject to see which firmware is that so I can load automatically the plugin. So I will change the profile here. So I can hit connect. Will be fast. Okay, now it's ended. So it's quite fast. The profile, I have a profile dialog to to add profiles because you can have any amount of printers and then you have a lot of materials for that. So you can have a profile for each material. And we have this maximum bed and hot end temperatures that go direct to the dial to keep you away from not burning your house, for example. Yeah, because 3D printers can get on fire. So we, can, we are trying to avoid that. And we have, we have some f nice features like a post-pause command when you have a decode file and you want, for, if you want to pause the printer to change the filament, for example, you, and the, your decode, decode wasn't sliced to have that pause, you can add a custom command, pause co command, and then when you hit pause, at the core C that you have, a uh, custom command, and we will use that instead of the default one. At core also allows you, isn't on Atelier yet because it needs some work, but at core today already supports the code injection also because you don't need to get the, to the work to re slice your file. Slicing is when you get the STL object, uh, pass the literal program that turns into the code. So we already had the, in the code injection. 
but is not here yet. So you choose, as you get the port the, right here, let's connect here. You get the port and get the profile and then you connect. And that's the log. Hey, connect again. Yay. So we have these two main dials, that is the bad one and the hot end one. Here we have key shards with the graph, uh, key graph is view to the moving the axis, buttons of the to general control. We today we have the basic control of the, the printer done, so you can manage uh, most of the features. But if your printer has a little bit difference on firmware, because it's open source, so you can get the firmware and add this stuff for you, so we can uh, support that on Atelier also. Uh, we have some advanced tab here where you can see the log. Yeah, we log everything that goes out and comes from the zero connection. So we have a lot like M105 that gets the temperature, so we do our rejects on that to get the temperatures of the bed and the, of the extruder. We can push commands and control other stuff. We can also manage the SD card files. You can print for that, get a list, and delete basic management of the SD card. So that <laughs> that's it for now. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. I think that this interface isn't good enough because I also think that I want to bring the best experience to my user. And I think that we still have a lot of work to do on Atelier to get to a, a good state. Because... <sighs> okay. Uh, because I think that KDE has all this thing about being give a, a, the user a good experience and has the vision to conquer all devices. I won't be able to do that with Atelier if I don't give the user a good experience in, in platform. So I think that need, needs some tri uh, tweaking before launching. I hope that I was hoping to launch dur during Academy, but I was uh, able to finish the code and to finish. Okay. And uh, I hope that later this year we'll be able to. We are already working on Articore 2.0 that's almost ready to launch too and following probably Atelier. Uh, okay, let's touch. Tomás did this one and this is nice. Yay! So, just showing that. I send it so the graph will be up here the orange line later. Anyway. Okay. So uh Atelier has a Qt application runs multi platform. So we have here Linux, Windows and OS X. Uh the Windows uh the Windows user is I met him like a couple weeks ago. And how oh, I want to test it, so the guy downloaded the binary and started to use it and gave me a good feedback and the praying the, <laughs> the control and 3D printers at the same time because I attend some events of 3D printing industry and the companies want to be able to control more than, a print, uh, more than one printer at the same time because they have farms of 3D printers. So you may... Uh, you, it's, it's hard to, to manage each one of them because a printer host is used uh, to, the, to easier the life, but uh, people that has advanced skills those, uh, don't want to get binded to a computer. So they want an embedded device or a way to control remotely. So is that uh, kind of the work that we will focus now, uh, giving us core our web layer so we can connect remotely and working on a KML version for the interface. But this all thing already works. And thank you to people from KDE Windows. We have the binary fa factory Ron Jenkins that has master builds for Windows and OS X. Linux, we have the flat pack that one of the developers made. 
and we have master and nightly builds from them. We are working on the app image script, but we are using through Travis CI to build it. So we have it's, it's good that we already know that is being used. So the user Windows user download that fact there and start to test for us. And la last 31 July, Atelier made two years. So we had a core release at the beginning of this year. That is to, until today we have more than 100 downloads. Fifth of them for Windows, 44 for IP Mage, and the sixth for OSG. This uh, running Atelier in other platforms than Linux was a worry since the beginning of the project because most of people on the printing use Windows. I can force them to move to Linux. I could, but uh, I can't. So that was our main concern since the beginning. So when Craft start, uh, the Windows and OS she's build is made with Craft. So since the beginning, we got to order to make Craft to work, build at uh, Atelier and at Core correctly, so we could use. At Core has, and Atelier has this number of comments. I'm too nervous to say them. And I'm glad of this, I'm proud of these two years. And I can't forget to thank the people that is working with me. That, um, that would be Patrick Pereira from Brazil. He's a contributor for KDE, most of CAD developing lately. And Chris Zitello, that is from New York. Uh, and Tomás for guiding us, not killing each other during the development of Atelier. Uh, okay. Any questions? Here. Great talk. Thank you. Thank um, you. I have a 3D printer at home. How do I know if it's supported, or are all 3D printers supported, or is there a list, or okay. how do I know? Okay. Uh, most of the 3D printers have the firmware open source. We have, uh, let me open, uh, la, 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 profiles. We have here uh, the auto detect, we have the plugins here. So we support Tia Cup, Sprinter, Smoother, Repetier, Marlin, GRBL, EAE printer. This is the, the firmware that we support that are open source. There are the printers that are closed source on the firmware. They and they use G-code too, or they use another fork of G-code, so we don't support them because they are proprietary and I don't have, have, have access to them. But most of the printers that you buy from China, anyway, are open source. You, do you know the model of your printer? Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah, pro I think that Annette is smiling. Annette, I think, is smiling, so probably work. And it's, yeah, from, if it's from China, we work. The only the proprietary ones that won't work, only if they give us money to build the, the support. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask about the video feature. I don't have a 3D printer. Okay. Uh, so is that just supposed to watch the 3D printer as it prints and? Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, let me play this again. Uh, the, mo the most wanted feature for anyone that has a 3D printer is to not depend on the machine to use. They want an embedded version that runs on a Raspberry Pi to connect to the printer. So when you leave the, uh, the printer alone printing, you can connect to that server and get the feed of the printer to see if the model is printing right. So we have uh, this feature. To this, this is from any printer on alone. But uh, is, is that because to monitor the printer and see? Because uh, there is one printer host that is open source that is called OctoPrint that is, is for embedded device. You put the server OctoPrint on a Raspberry Pi and you open your connection internet for outside your house so you can connect to it and get that. So we need also to also have this kind of feature because people will want to use that embedded. The industry, uh, the industry wants to get embedded device. They don't care much about a desk desktop version. 
So, but I want to hit the mass that depends on computer uh, and is getting into 3D printing. Any more questions? Yeah, but I uh, I didn't test it, but I think that you can add a uh, LED uh, UDP URL here for remote camera, and it works because of QT stuff. Yeah, you are RTP connection, you can access a remote camera. But this is only for monitoring with Atelier on your desktop because we don't like have the web layer yet. Work. Oh, yeah, it worked now. Uh, what are you using for the 3D view? Is it like Qt 3D? Or yeah, Qt 3D. But the, uh, the uh, when Patrick did this one, was on like alpha or better version of Q3D, so we needed to rewrite this, and I already invoked the KDEB Q3D man <laughs> to go to the above this week to build it. And one curious thing about Atelier is that when you are running Atelier and printing, the consumer of memory is around uh, 100 megabytes of memory. My main concurrent that's is the one with closed source is like two gig two gigabytes of memory. Yeah, C sharp. So we have this advantage of being C and Qt that make it our life so much easier during the development. Anyone else? She Any more questions? She. Right. There is one guy over there too. <laughs> Let's take this question here. Uh, yeah, I have a question regarding the preview. Uh, so the the GUI itself is Qt widgets based, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how did you implement the preview with OpenGL, or did you use Qt 3D or Qt 3D? Okay. Yes. Uh, the source code is on KDE Git. Okay, you can get later. Um, you can also get onto my channels. We will hold up both this Wednesday. If anyone wants to come, please come. We need more developers. And we will discuss this stuff. Tomás will be with us. And these are our channels. You can get us there all the time. And she has one last question. He's coming. And we have a last question. Thank you. I have a very functional question. Uh, where you are in the uh, of the if the features of your of atelier compared to the that commercial software printing? Yeah. The, uh, when I uh, atelier start because of the proprietary software. Uh, the name of the software is a Petier host. They were open source until like two, three years ago on the Apache license. And then they closed the source. But the program is still awful. But uh, Herpetia is used because it's the, was the, I think that was the first one. And everyone says that to use it. So uh, I'm not making so much fuss about Atelier yet. I have contacts with him. people out the printing industry. When I release Atelier, they will evaluate and indicate to people and I think that we can do a better job because a, a repetier is really awful. You know, a, a repetier yeah, on Linux runs over mono, and they have an object to see version for EOS that's completely different interface. So I think that I can get points to have a common interface for all platform and get into the industry. But at the mass, I. I I think that people that are entering to the printing can use Atelier, but people that are already are advanced skill, they don't like to use a printer host. They put the, the code on the SD card and hit print. But they, uh, the talks that I have with people on the industry, people, factors that make it through the printers in Brazil, for example, they like the Atelier because it's open source and they want to us to build, uh, they want to embed the atelier on their printers just because 
open source is one of the of them and they don't want to pay like 20 euros for la for license for machine bec and uh, in a repeater server opens a browser inside the Raspberry Pi and the touches stuff is awful and we have KML that can give us a huge exp good experience on touch device and I hope that uh, on the industry that will work at least if I get this connect uh, atelier embedded on the main manufacturing in Brazil that we are discussing uh, this is our channel so you can contact us there I think that I made a, a good talk even nervous I, I I want to thank you KD for giving me the opportunity to come to my first Academy and doing my first talk a lot of first today and I'm Okay, I, I can see. Thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow we will have the to the printer. We will, we will print KD keychain so anyone can buy it tomorrow. I hope so. And I will be during this week so you can reach me out. And there. Thank you. All right, thank you. And now we're going to have a couple of minutes break and then we're going to continue with uh, Kate.